بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children, I welcome you back to the stories the series of the stories of the prophets and messengers Today is a night of Rabi'ul Thani, 13th of Rabi'ul Thani and it's 1442 years after the migration of our Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with November 28th, 2020 in this blessed night, we are going to continue the story of Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. But before we continue the story, I want to tell you something very important. These stories which are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu all of their sources from Allah. So that shows that all these stories are true stories. They are not like any other stories that you read from the comic books or the story books. Second, Allah knows everything about these stories and the full details of the stories. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only gave us certain information, which called the snapshots. Whatever He gave us is enough for us. Whatever he did not give us, we don't have to worry about it. This is something you have to keep always in mind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا you have, not been, you have not been given knowledge, but very little. But this little amount of knowledge is actually vast. But little compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is, has no limit. Allah's knowledge has no limit. So when we are learning these stories, obviously there will be so many questions which will come in your mind. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? You might have the answer, but that should be in the Quran and the Sunnah. But if there is no answer, then don't worry about these questions. And we are going to talk about these things and that's why in our classes, many times I mention to you, this information is not correct. This information is not in the Quran. Why I mention that? Because many times you will hear people are telling you these stories injected as a story of Prophet Isa as if it is in the Quran. That's why you need to know what is the true story versus what are the false information out there. This way you can protect the purity of the information or the stories that you learn about the prophets and the messengers. It's very simple. We have to only focus what is in the Quran and what is from our Prophet And the rest of it we do not need. <clears throat> Last time we talked about the family of Imran. This is the grandfather, maternal grandfather of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and the birth of his mother Maryam alayhi salam. Today we are going to talk about her guardianship, Maryam's guardianship. Of course her guardians are the parents, but as you know that when we are growing up, at certain times we have other guardians also. For example, when you go to school, your parents are not there. Your teachers are your guardian. For example, some children, when they are at home and their parents are working, they have nannies. So the nannies are their guardians. Sometimes our parents go for Hajj or for their job and they stay in another country maybe for some time and they find some guardianship for us. Maybe they will keep us under the guardianship of our grandparents or uncles and so on and so forth. So when Maryam salam was growing up, we do not know what was the reason. But what we do know that there was a point that she needed a guardianship. They wanted to appoint somebody to be in charge of her matters. Why was it? We do not know. Was it because her parents died? Maybe. But we do not have any information of that. There is a fake story which says that when Maryam was born, her mother took her to the, the mosque and they appointed, they wanted to appoint somebody as the guardian to the baby. Is this story true? We have no idea. 
Allah doesn't mention this story, but people sometimes quote this information, not authentic, not true under any, any way, shape or form. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this fact while talking about the guardianship of Maryam alayhi salam in Surah Ali Imran. Allah ta'ala says that after Maryam was born and her mother made this dua, oh Allah, I want to devote my baby to you, so accept her and so on and so forth. Allah answered her dua. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 37, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا So her Lord accepted her with goodly acceptance, which means Allah accepted the dua and Allah accepted the goodness of this baby to grow up, this baby to grow up as good child. وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا And he, Allah made her grow in a good manner. وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّ And Zakaria was put in charge of Maryam. Zakaria was not her father. Zakaria was the brother-in-law of Maryam a.s. Meaning, Zakaria was married to the sister of Maryam a.s. What was the name of the sister? We have no idea. Allah doesn't mention, the Prophet doesn't mention. Then Allah Ta'ala says, because Maryam, although at that time she was exactly how old she was, if, if you ask us how old was she, we have no idea. But she was grown up enough to worship Allah, to be alone in a room and so on and so forth. And that's why Allah Ta'ala mentions, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ Every single time Zakaria used to enter her mihrab. Mihrab is the chamber where she used to stay to worship Allah. وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا He used to find with her certain kind of provision. Now what was the provision? Some people they said it is fruit. Some people they said it is the fruit of the summer in the time of winter, the fruit of winter in the time of summer. Is this true? We have no idea. Allah mentions provision, we just keep it like that. Whatever it is, could be food, it could be whatever. Allahu Alam. But something really amazing. She was not supposed to just get it like that. Qala ya Maryam. So Zakari asked her, O Maryam, Anna laki hada. Where did you get this from? Qala tuwa min indillah. So she said, This is from Allah. So it was a miracle. Inna Allah yarzuku ma yasha u bi ghairi hisab. Indeed, and then she said something really beautiful. And that shows that she was of that age. She was young. But she was very smart and so obedient and so good to Allah that Allah gave her miracle at that time. She said, Allah gives rizq or provision, mayyasha, whoever he wishes, bi ghairi hisab, without any limit. Now, Zakaria alayhi salam, he was a prophet. He was one of the major prophets of Bani Israel at that time. But he was very old and his wife was barren, meaning she could not have babies, and he didn't have a child. But Prophet Zakaria was really wishing to have a righteous child who would carry his message. He just didn't want any child. Righteous child. But he was very old and his wife was barren. But when he saw this and Maryam told her him that Allah can give provision, whoever he wishes, he, a, a thought occurred to him. He said, why don't I ask Allah too? So Allah Ta'ala says about the dua of Zakaria. Hunalika da'a Zakaria. At that time, Zakaria asked Allah. He didn't ask Maryam. Say, oh Maryam, ask Allah to give me a child. No. He asked Allah directly. Da'a Rabbahu. He, da'a, oh, Hunalika da'a Zakaria Rabbahu. At that time, Zakaria made dua to his Lord. قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبًا He said, Oh my Lord, give me a righteous offspring from yourself. Because children come from Allah. If Allah doesn't want to give anybody children, He will not. Allah can give somebody hundreds of children, but all of them are disobedient, bad. So righteous children only can come from Allah. إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى Indeed, you are the one who hears the dua. فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ So the angels called to him 
وَهُوَ قَائِمُ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمِحْرَابِ And he was standing and praying in his chamber. أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَا They said Allah is giving you glad tidings with Yahya. This is his son. مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَاتٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَسَيِّدًا وَحَصُورًا وَنَبِيًّا مِّنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Not only he will be just righteous, but he will be a prophet. And he will be the one who will confirm the word of Allah. And he will be a very noble man away from illicit relationship. And he will be a righteous prophet. So this is a great glad tidings. قَالَ رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامُ وَقَدْ بَلَغَنِي الْكِبَرُ وَمْرَأَةِ عَاقِرًا So then he said, Oh Allah, he's just asking. He knows that Allah can do anything. He said, Oh Allah, how am I going to have a child? I'm old and my wife is barren. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَا So it was said to him, Allah said to him, Thus, this is, thus is Allah when he wishes. He can make impossible things happen. Then the story continues of Zakaria. Kala Rabbi Jaali Aya. He said, Well, my Lord, give me a sign. Kala Aya tuka Allah tuka liman nasa thalathata ayyamin illa ramza. He said, Oh, my Lord, give me a sign. Allah said, Your sign will be that you will not be able to speak for three days except with signal, with sign language. But Allah Ta'ala said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا But yet you have to remember Allah a lot. Even while he could not speak. Huh? وَسَبِّحْ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِبْكَارِ And glorify his name in the morning and in the evening. Prophet Zakaria a.s. was put in charge of Maryam, who was a young child or a young girl at that time. We exactly know, do not know how old she was. But look at her righteousness. She was such a righteous lady because of her words. Just simple word. Allah gives rizq to whoever he wishes. The result of that is an old man and an old woman got one of the most righteous children of all time. One of the most righteous children, Yahya alayhi salam. And this is the only baby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named him. At that time there was no baby named Yahya. Nobody was named Yahya before him, before the great Prophet Yahya When talking about the guardianship of Maryam, Allah Ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكِ This is a part of the knowledge of the unseen that we relate to you, O Muhammad. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ You are not with them. And this is something all of us should remember. When we talk about the prophets and messengers, we cannot talk from hallucination. We cannot just talk from, oh, I heard this, I heard that. It has to be in the Quran or from the words of the Prophet that we can verify that this hadith is authentic and correct. Because we were not there. Allah mentions this even to Prophet Muhammad Don't talk about the prophets from what you hear from people. Talk about the prophet's story only from revelation. That's why Allah said, وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ You were not with them, O Muhammad. إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَامَهُمْ When they threw their pen, for what reason they threw their pen? أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمْ Who is going to take care of the guardianship of Maryam? وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ And you were not with them, إِذْ يَخْتَصِمُونَ When they disagreed, when they disputed. How they disputed, if you ask, we have no idea. Did this happen when Maryam was born? We have no idea. At what age they disputed? We have no idea. How did they throw the pen? Now some people, they will tell you that this is what happened. They put the names of the people in the pen and they put the pens in the shelf. And they told the little boy to go and grab the pen. So the bad boy would go and grab the pen. And the pen he picked up is a pen that has the name of Zakaria. Is this happened? We have no idea. Then they will tell you that they did, but they were not satisfied. I said they threw the pen in the river. And they said if the pen goes against the current, the pen, the pen which will go against the current of the water, 
the owner of that pen will be the guard owner of that pen will be the guardian of maryam so when they did that the pen of zakaria went against the current so they did not they were not happy with it is this true story true we have no idea then they did it the third time all of this is fake story the third time they say they throw the pen and this time if the pen goes with the current the owner of the pen will be the guardian of uh, maryam and supposedly the story said that it was the pen of zakaria are these details of how they threw the pen correct not any in any way shape or form what is enough for us to know that they used the pen the pen that was available in their time how they did it we do not know but they finally chose they disputed and they finally chose the great prophet zakaria who was also the relative close relative of sayyidina maryam alayhi salam and we see the great gift that sayyidina zakaria alayhi salam achieved from being the guardian of maryam alayhi salam and this is how when you are righteous children you can also help your parents to be better inshallah they can benefit from you as you benefit from them subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh